All right, so the image, you know, we, we touched briefly on the idea that uh, that there was this image that was driving this overall perforation pattern, so. Actually, Heath, you know what, if I can interrupt you, I'm sorry. I have a question here, which is probably a good time to ask it. Um, uh, folks are wondering what software uh, was used to create the overall design um, of, of the project. So was this a Revit project, is this a Rhino project, is an Archicad project? Mm -hmm. So we, we, we began the initial conceptual uh, massing and modeling uh, within Rhino and Grasshopper. And so we, we tried to set out from the very beginning a way that we could easily uh, share scripts, uh, Grasshopper scripts between the structural engineer and the design team. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, you know, we, we've kind of learned as we've done some of these NFL stadiums over the past few years that having a good computational strategy up front uh, could really help in, um, I think of efficiency not so much as like how, f how quickly we're, we're arriving at a solution, but more about uh, how, how many different solutions can we explore and, and how well can we arrive at the right one. So, so we tried to set up a computational strategy that began with Rhino and Grasshopper. Um, very quickly that included uh, a lot of Python uh, uh, scripting along with the Grasshopper, mm -hmm. and at at some point in the process, it became very apparent that uh, just the bottleneck of the uh, the geometry because of the scope of this project. You know, these are things that uh, that that we've all been doing for several years. You know, kind of managing this complex geometry, but the the sheer scope that we were looking at, just the computation time um, to be able to uh, to to compute these things and then to uh, to to kind of get that that data that information from one person to another, mm -hmm. really required that uh, that after the Grasshopper and Rhino and the Python, we went into a C++ environment uh, with Visual Studio and started to uh, uh, to create a lot of these procedurals uh, within that environment that would allow us uh, to kind of keep the bottlenecks in check so that we could have this pipeline of geometry mm -hmm. um, that could be uh, delivered in different formats. When you're talking. Uh I'm guessing maybe you're, and correct me if I'm wrong here, you're primarily talking about this this skin, um, I think. Um, I'm curious about the entire project, you know, the actual stadium part, sort of the guts of, of everything else. Is it sort of a hybrid uh, between, you know, uh, let's say Revit and, 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 and Rhino slash Grasshopper or... Uh, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's uh, that, that's kind of the way we approach these. Is that uh, Revit is, a, is it's a very powerful documentation tool, and you know, and and for certain things, it can be uh, you know, I think the right platform for some of the design consideration, and so. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the the bowl uh, design work that we're doing for the uh, the seating bowl um, that's kind of uh, within the, the the Revit platform, mm -hmm. and then Revit becomes kind of a, a container uh, mm -hmm. for all of the information, so that uh, uh, we can understand between different parts of this really really large team that includes uh, not only people at HKS but uh, other consultants as well. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes kind of a repository or container for the, uh, the the geometry at large for the different parts and pieces. So uh, what we might be working on. Uh, within Visual Studio or within uh, Rhino and Grasshopper uh, will at any given time be represented in some way within this Revit model that, uh, that kind of houses all of the info. Okay, cool. Um, so I just wanted to take a minute to sort of talk that through a little bit. Um, so, so back to the image. Yeah, so so going back to the image, so you know, er, early on the, the design team had this idea that this, uh, this, this microscopic image uh, uh, abstracted uh, Really could create this uh, this this kind of beautiful visual of of a perforation pattern over this this entire skin system, and so as as you can imagine, um, early in conceptual design, um, it was it was relatively easy to kind of map this image you know at different scales and create renderings that uh, that could convey the idea right. Um, what became uh, a little more challenging is that when we really you know, we, we had some uh, some agreement and alignment on the idea from the from the client and the project team, and then we needed to really start to study it. Um, this image was 15,000 by 15,000 pixels, uh, and even then, it needed to be tiled across the surface. And so, what became the challenge was actually rendering this or visualizing it in a way uh, that we could see it uh, where our pixel dimension wasn't the size of five, six, seven, uh, or more perforations. And so um, if we couldn't get the fidelity uh, with the visualization, we were really kind of cheating ourselves in terms of what we were actually going to see. And so the challenge then with the image was how can we, um, how can we process this image in a way uh, that allows us uh, to, to create the visual that we're looking at 
um, in a manner that's consistent with physics and the way light's actually working and not a rendering trick, right? So. Mm -hmm. What we started to look at was different uh, different dot densities um, as we're just manipulating the uh, the image itself here, and so uh, we're we're kind of taking this image and we're looking at kind of different abstraction levels, and so obviously the more dot density we have, the closer to the original image it gets. And then the next study, as we move to the next page, we start to uh, to look at some halftone uh, procedures uh, to this image as we're processing it. And you can see kind of a, a zoomed in uh, on the, the images above, the three images, and then corresponding with each of those is kind of a, an overall, you know, kind of taking this overall starting image and seeing what happens when we're looking at that. So if we start to look at it with different halftone varieties and in grayscale, we can start to see not only what that does from like a, an overall perspective from very far away, but uh, also as we begin to move closer or what kind of grain or detail is involved. Heath, what are, I don't understand what you mean here when you're talking about half tones and grayscales. What, what are you really doing to that image? So these are these are essentially you know if we if we were to open up Photoshop and then start mm -hmm. to uh, to use some of the filters and and uh, and start to manipulate that this is essentially what this is we're we're using Photoshop and um, mm -hmm. and using that to manipulate the image so that we can just see what different varieties of abstraction uh, we can we can achieve with it mm -hmm. and so you might imagine uh, you could take a picture of yourself uh, you know your face and you could put it in and uh, by by doing enough of these kind of color dodging grayscales half tones and these different effects. We can start to create something that uh, that might still be recognizable uh, as your face at some level, but as yeah. you zoomed in or out, it could start to become really abstract and more visually interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. Okay. So uh, next slide here, we start to see, um, you know, moving beyond the, the halftone uh, procedures and processes, we're looking at some Gaussian blur and then looking at some of these overlays. And so this is uh, really just an example of how we're starting to, uh, to manipulate the, the image using different techniques within Photoshop. So we're trying to, uh, to manipulate it enough that it becomes something unique, you know? So even though we're starting with something that would probably not be recognizable uh, from, from most anyone that sees the image had we left it the same, uh, it became a lot more artistic and, and, and really started to read at better scale uh, when we did manipulate it and abstract it, you know, to different levels. Mm 